Good morning and welcome to First United Methodist Church, Mount Gilead, our Wednesday morning devotion. Uh, just a couple things I would like to invite you to. Uh, Sunday morning, if you do not have a home church, we'd like to invite you to Zion. Uh, they, their worship service starts at 9 o'clock. Uh, if you like to sleep a little bit later, we welcome you to First Church, Sunday school at 10 and preaching at 11 o'clock. We'd love to have you here. Our... The, before we get started, why don't we open with a prayer? Our Father and God, we give you thanks and praise for the beauty of this day. Father, for this fall season as we wait the turning of the leaves and, and for the, the Christmas in the air, we just thank you, Father, that, that you created for us a beautiful world for us to be a part of. We thank you for the love that you have for us, even though we're so unloving at times. And we just ask that we may return this love to you. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our title for our devotion this morning is titled, Love God, Love Neighbor. Our scripture comes from the 22nd chapter of Matthew, verses 34 through 40. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together, and one of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. As I was wondering what scripture and topic to talk about this morning, the scripture from Matthew 22 kept coming to mind. We learned the scripture many years ago, but do we follow Jesus' command to love God and love our neighbor? Sounds pretty easy, at least the part about loving God. But do we love God with our heart, our soul, and our mind? I would like to say yes all the time, but I know there are times when I leave God out of my life. Don't we get busy with life and forget to talk to God and making all of our decisions? I do at times. We're often like the baseball player at the plate waiting for the next ball to be thrown. And the ball arrives quickly across the plate before we have time to swing the bat. This is how fast life comes at us. Very fast. But God wants us to slow down enough to recognize not only his presence, but that he is with us always. And we are to love God with our heart, our mind, and our soul. Over a hundred years ago, a book was written by Charles Shelton, In His Steps. And the premise was, what would happen when we ask the question? What would Jesus do when we are confronted with all of life's problems and situations? When we face our daily struggles asking this question, then we start loving God with our whole being, trying to be more Christ-like. But Jesus did not stop by telling the Pharisees just to love God, but also to love your neighbor. Now, if we think loving God is easy, loving your neighbor can be a challenge. It's easy to think of our neighbor as the folks closest to us where we live. I guess I've been very lucky or blessed because I have a good neighbor. But neighbor also means a person down the street or from a different county or state or different political party or even a person from another country. We are supposed to love these people too. This doesn't seem quite fair. We are supposed to love people that are not like us or even in the same economic class or the same color or the same religion. We do not get to, get to pick and choose our neighbors. God has already done this for us. By saying that the greatest commandment is to love God and to love your neighbor, this gives a new slant to the traditional interpretation. To love God, that was clear enough, but also say to love another in the same breath puts both these commands on equal footing. One, if not more important than the other. To love God is to love my neighbor, and to truly love my neighbor is to love God. In fact, we can't make any sense out of Jesus' radical command to love our en enemies unless we first recognize the love that God has for us. 
and, the, and, and loves us in such a radical way, even though we are his enemies because of sin. The love of God and the love of our neighbor are inseparable. You cannot claim to love God if you don't love your neighbor. Essentially, the entire law of God can be boiled down to two simple commandments. Love God with your whole being and love whomever God puts next to you as you love yourself. Let's bow for a closing prayer. Father God, thank, thanks for always loving us. Help us to truly love our neighbors as we love you. Make us a blessing to all our neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Folks, have a good day.